It's good to be back. How many of us believe in the miraculous? Now, wait, before you, before you give me any kind of sign, how many of us really believe that, that there is a, uh, a miraculous thing that God wants to do, God desires to do something in your life in the miraculous form, or that life is a case of ra sera, you know, whatever will be, will be. What do you feel? Let me, let me get a raising of hands. If you really believe that God wants to be involved in our lives in a supernatural, miraculous way, uh, would you raise your hand and just show me, yeah, great, yes, 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 yes. Let me ask you another thing. Also, how many believe that, uh, that there's a limit on the miracles that God will do for you? You know, you can have one, two, maybe three miracles in your life, and then you limit out on miracles. Uh, you know, you can have no more. You can have this many. You're allotted this many miracles. Or do you believe that uh, God would desire to give you a miracle every day or miracles even every day? If, if you believe that God would love to work in your life in such a way to give you miracles every day, would you raise your hand again? Man, we got a lot of people that are great candidates for, for miracles. Uh, now, I want to ask you one more question before I, I, I get into some scriptures. But one more thing. How many of you believe that there is a miracle in you? Now, what I mean by that is, do you believe that you have power within you to work miracles for your life, for the lives of others, for the life of your loved ones? Do you believe that God desires that you work miracles? Now, I'm not going to let you just answer that one because I really want to just show you that there is a power in you to be miraculous, to be supernatural. You see, in the Bible, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, it says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness, look at this, through our knowledge of Him, who called us by His own glory and goodness. Through these, through what? Through our knowledge of him and through the divine power. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. The King James Version says exceeding great and precious promises. Through these, he's given us these very great and precious promises so that, here's why, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature. Now, now what that verse is saying is, is that as we grow in our knowledge of God through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we grow in our knowledge of Him, a divine nature takes place inside of us that allows us to go out and gather up all the great and precious promises. Every child of God is given the Holy Spirit, the divine nature, and it comes and it dwells inside of each of us. And as that Holy Spirit comes inside of us, and as we grow in our knowledge of him, then great and precious promises are part of our lives that we just go and gather. In other words, there is a miracle in you. And don't just limit to a miracle. There are miracles in you. There are things that God wants to do through you and with you that will not only bless you, but will reach this region. You see, I believe that people want to see the God of the Bible. The God that does miracles. The God that opened Red Seas. The God that turned fishes and loaves enough food to feed 5,000. I believe that the region is waiting for somebody to show them that God. Uh, in you is the miracle that you need. Now, some of us need a miracle in our health. Some of us are in a crisis situation. You've been to the doctors, and the doctors have given you a bad report. And you need God to give you a miracle in your health. Well, God wants to. Some of us need a miracle in our finances. We've been battling finances for all of our lives. And all of us, we want to get free, and it's going to take a miracle sometimes. But God wants to do that for you. There's a miracle in you. Some of us need a miracle in our families, in our homes, in our marriages, with our child or children. You're on your last nerve with that husband or wife or that child, and, and you're wanting God to do something. Well, he wants to, but he wants you to find the miracle that's in you. 
Some of us need a miracle at our job place or, or, or something going on in our life, some crises going on. God wants to work a miracle in you. But I want to say this. I want to add this right now. Miracles, and a lot of the miracles, in fact, probably most of the miracles in the Bible, are not given during crises time. Uh, think about it. Turning water into wine was not in a crisis. Casting your net on the other side of the boat and all of that, that was not a crisis. God wants to just move miraculously in your life so that your life will be fun and full. Right. So that good things will happen for you and to you and with you and through you and that you'll be able to be a light to this world. God wants to work miracles through each of us. Now, for the next few weeks, I want to talk about this, expecting the miraculous. I want to stir us up to begin to expect the miraculous in your life, not just in the life of someone else, but in your life. See, I believe that there is a miracle in every circumstance. I believe there's a miracle in every situation. I believe there's a miracle in every crisis. But I also believe there's a miracle in every heart's desire. What is it that you want to do in your life? What heart's desire do you have? Well, there's a miracle there. And God wants to manifest a miracle through you. He wants you to take the divine nature that's in you. Let me ask you a question. Did Jesus say or did Jesus not say that greater things will you do than I did? Did Jesus say that you will do greater things than I have done? Well, where is that, Jesus? Where is that happening? The reason that we don't experience the miraculous as we wish that we would is because we don't expect the miraculous. I want to stir you up. I want to help you find your miracle. I want to show us how we can combine our divine nature that lives within each of us, and we can allow that to hover over the darkness and the voidness of our lives and to create a world that is perfect in every way. God wants you to have an abundant life. So there's a miracle in every situation, and there's a miracle in your house. Now, that's what I want to talk about today. That's my title. What do you have in your house? I want to tell you today there's a miracle waiting for you in your house, in your life. Somewhere there's one waiting for you. So that's what I want to talk about today. If you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, uh, uh, look at with me, please, at 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. I'll be there, oh, 20, 30 minutes. <laughs> you don't believe that, huh? I'll be there sometimes in a little while. But we'll be looking at a lot of, a lot of scriptures, and, and I just want you to read them with me. You can write them down and take notes, get the tape, get the video, whatever that you might need to do. But I want you to do this. And I want us to see these miracles and how they work. And then... While you're turning, if you will, to 2 Kings chapter 4, I want to pray for us. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for wonderful people. Thank you, Lord, for being a God of the miraculous. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to show us today and what you're going to stir in our hearts and that there really are miracles awaiting for each of us, that each of us have a divine nature inside of us to bring forth the miraculous in our lives and the miraculous for others. So, Father, I ask you today to help me. Father, I pray for myself. Lord, I pray that I won't talk too fast. I won't talk too slow and that what I will say will be interesting. I pray for an anointing upon myself, Lord, but I also pray for an anointing upon every person here. That every ear will be anointed so that it can hear what the Spirit of God wants to say to each person. And I ask you to bless our time together that we'll go out of here more encouraged and edified and exhorted so that we can go and experience the supernatural and the miraculous life that you want us to. And I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's interesting that many of the miracles in the Bible begin with or used something that was already in the possession of the person needing or wanting the miracle. I want to show you a couple of these. Uh, Jesus told the disciples to bring him the five loaves and the two fish. You remember the story. He had been ministering and, and uh, uh, he wanted to feed the multitude. They'd come out to hear him and listen to him. And they, they came to him and, and he says, you feed them. And they said, we don't have anything to feed them. All we have are five loaves and two fish. So what, let's look what Jesus did. In Matthew chapter 14 and verse 17, it says, we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus said, verse 18, Bring them here to me. 
See, Jesus wants us to bring him what we have, and then he will take it and multiply it, just as that song said. But we bring it to him, and he fed more than 5,000 people with those five loaves and two fish. Those five loaves and two fish were the seed of a miracle. Those five loaves and two fish had a miracle in them. And they were something that they already had. These five loaves and two fish didn't fall out of heaven. They didn't just poof and exist. They were something that they already had, and they took, Jesus took those, those five loaves and two fish and fed these multitude of people. And I want us to make sure we see this is not a crisis miracle. Jesus just wanted to bless the people. They weren't starving to death. He just wanted to bless them. So he fed them. See, we've got to realize that the miraculous isn't just for our bad times. The miraculous should happen to us all of the time. We need miracles in our lives on a consistent basis. And Jesus wants to do that for us. So what do you have that you can bring to Jesus? What does your child have? Five loaves, two fish? What, what's available to bring to Jesus to see the miracle that you really want to have? You know, God called Moses. And Moses desperately needed to know that he was called of God. Moses was called of God to deliver people. But he was really struggling with his calling. He, uh, he was really wrestling with God as far as what he should do. And he needed security. He needed to know that God was going to work with him and that there was a miracle in him to deliver the people. How was an old man like Moses going to work deliverance for a nation with a, against a mighty Pharaoh? So God told Moses, he says this in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 2, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. It's just a stick. It's just a shepherd's stick. What is that that you already have in your hand? It's just a stick. But Moses took that stick and he worked miracle after miracle after miracle with that stick. There were miracles in that stick that Moses already had. It wasn't a new stick. It was the old stick that Moses had been carrying around all of his life. What have you been carrying around all of your life that God put into your hand? You see, it will work deliverance for you, for your family, for your children. It will work deliverance for your loved ones. There's something that you already have that are going to win those loved ones that you want brought into the kingdom of God to Jesus Christ. Amen. We can reach this region with what we've already got. We haven't got to recreate it. We haven't got to wait for anything else. There is enough ability right here. There's enough miracles right here in this room to reach this region with the gospel of the kingdom of God. What have you got? What can you bring to Jesus? What old stick do you already have in your hand? Jesus told Peter, said, Peter, cast that net on the right side, on the other side of the boat. <laughs> now, let me tell you about this net. This old net had been mended many times. This is an old cast net, but there's miracle in that cast net. An old cast net, he had mended it. You know, I mean, I want us to see that our lives don't have to be perfect to have a miracle in them. You can be mended and broken and mended and broken and mended and broken, but there's a miracle in you. There's a miracle in your cast net. Here's what he said on John 21, 6. And he said unto him, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it from the for the multitude of fishes. See, in that old net was a financial miracle. Listen, he, he, Peter wasn't going to eat all these fish. What Peter was going to do was take these fish to the market and make money. In you somewhere is a financial miracle. If you're struggling with your finances and you've been wrestling with something that you already have has a miracle in it, and if you just cast it on the right side of the ship, you're going to have a miracle working in your finances. He wants to play. And this, again, was not a crisis miracle. Just wanted to bless Peter. Just wanted to bless his guys. God wants to bless our lives. You already have something in your possession that will bring you a financial breakthrough. What is it? What is it? Jesus was asked to attend a wedding. You remember the story in Canaan of Galilee. He and his disciples were invited to come. And you know what happened? At this big wedding, and I'm going to talk about this one next week, 
But at this big wedding, they came, and it was a whole week celebration. It's not like our weddings that we do today. You know, we have a few hours of celebration. They celebrated the whole week. And the bridegroom was expected to provide the food and the wine for the whole time. Well, they ran out of wine. You remember the story. And in John chapter 2 and verse 6, it says here, Nearby stood six stone water jars. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Now, did they go out and get these jars, or did they already have them? Did they already have the water, or did they have to go get more water? It's already had it, already in the house. And they took them, and they filled those jars that they already had in the house, and the water turned to wine. There was a miracle in those jars. There was a miracle in that water that they already had. See, we don't have to be in crisis. We don't have to be in a bad time of our lives to experience the miraculous. What's well, interesting as I thought about this particular story, you see, he just didn't want these people, his friends, his relatives or whatever, whoever it, were, it was that they were getting married here, he didn't want them embarrassed. You know, it would be embarrassing to run out of food and wine at a, at a celebration like this. I've had this to happen in my life. I believe that God has worked miracles in my life just to keep me from being embarrassed. He will. He'll do it for you. Somehow, you know, you, you got a bill to pay, there's no money, and there's a $20 bill in your pocket. You know, somehow God does something, but he, he will do things for us when it's really not a crisis time, but sometimes just to keep us from being embarrassed. God is a great God. So, do you get my point? Are you getting what I'm trying to relate to you? See, here, here it is. A mystery of miracles is that from something that you already have in your possession will come your miracle. Let me read that one more time. A mystery of miracles is that from something that you already have in your possession will come your miracle. So what is it that you need or want from God today? Very likely, it's in something that you already have in your possession. What is it that you want? What is it that you need? See, people miss miracles because we're trained to think, and kind of like the video says, we've got to unlearn what we've learned. We're trained to think that miracles will just float down out of heaven. Or, uh, you know, the old bewitched thing, that somebody's going to wiggle their nose and poof, it, it happens. Uh, let me ask you a question. Ever, in the history of miracles in all of the Bible, did any miracle just float down from heaven? Think about it now. Even, listen, the manna from heaven didn't come floating down from heaven. Did you know that? See, it's using something that is already there. Here's the scripture, and I'll show it to you. It's in uh, Exodus chapter 16 and verse 4. It says, when the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. So the dew didn't float down. Somehow God used the dew that he already had to produce the miracle for these people. And what's interesting about this miracle is they gathered it how often? Every day. Every day. You can have a miracle every day. You just got to look under the dew. You got to learn where the miracle is. You got to learn to find that miracle. It is there somewhere. There's a miracle in your divine nature. There's a miracle in you. And God wants you to live a supernatural, miraculous life. Most likely, the miracle you need or want will not come from the creation of something new. It will come from the multiplication of something that you already have. Um, God did this in the miracle that we call creation. He didn't go poof and there be a new universe. He took the universe that he had and used it to create a world that was good in every way. You, you know what the Bible says. It's in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. In, in Genesis 1 2 it says this. And the earth was without, was, was, was. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now look at this. In the divine nature. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. See, the Lord took what he already had, though it was void, 
though it was covered with darkness, but he allowed the divine nature to hover over it and move upon it, the Spirit of God, and a world that was good in every way was formed. I want to tell you today that in your divine nature, in you, are miracles. That if you allow your divine nature and grow in your knowledge of God and allow that knowledge to hover over the thing that you need, over the darkness, over the voidness of your life, you can have a world that is good in every way. You don't have to miss a thing. You don't have to go through embarrassing times. You don't have to go through financial difficulties. You don't have to be ill and sick. There's a miracle waiting for us. All we've got to do is look under the dew, look under the darkness. It's there someplace. And God wants to take it and create for us. And he wants you to use the divine nature that he's given to you to create you a world that is good in every way. He wants you to live the abundant life. Your miracle is there. It will come from combining the divine nature that's within you with what you already have. Now, it might not be exactly where you think it should be, or it might not look exactly like you think it should look. It might be an old, worn-out cast net. But there's a miracle somewhere. Don't look over it. See, I think we miss our miracles by not looking in the right places. We're looking for them to float down out of heaven or to poof, when in actuality, we are supposed to find them. We're supposed to look for them. Proverbs Chapter 25 and verse 2 says this, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. <laughs> to search out a matter is the glory of kings. Now, are you kings' kids? Yes. Are you priests and kings unto our God? You see, we get glory, we get to show off God when we find out the matter. Your miracle is someplace. It may be under the dew, it may be in the darkness, but as you gain knowledge of God and you allow the divine nature that's in you, you will find your miracle and you will experience the miraculous. It might be in that rod, it might be in that cast net, it might be in those old jars sitting over there in the corner full of water. It, it might be in fishes and loaves. It might be in that old stick in your hand. But somewhere there's a miracle. And if we'll bring it and give it to Jesus, we'll experience a miraculous life, a supernatural life, a life that he wants us to experience. See, our God is the God of the miraculous. Our God is a God of the miraculous. And I really believe that allowing people to see God really work in our lives supernaturally and work in our lives miraculously are going to, is what it's going to take to win people from this whole region to Jesus Christ. They want to see the God of the Bible. Muhammad never worked miracles for his people. Did he? No. See, our God is a God of the miraculous. Muhammad never worked miracles for his people. Buddha never worked miracles for his people. But our God has always worked miracles for his people. From the beginning of creation until now, God moves in miracles. <laughs> our God is a great God. The Lord our God is one God. And he wants to move in our lives. He wants to do what nothing else can do for you. What do you have in your house? There's a great story in 2 Kings chapter 4, and I'm hoping that you're there in your Bible because I really want you to see this story. There's a story there of a woman who needed a financial miracle. Her husband had been a disciple of Elisha, but he had died and left her with some sons. And she came to Elisha and says, I have a problem. Uh, uh, I'm afraid the debtor, the, the, our creditor, the person that we owe money to, I believe that they're, go they're going to come and take my sons into slavery, in other words, to work off this debt. What should I do? That's verse 1. In verse 2, Elisha gives her a most interesting solution. And it's from this verse that I draw our title today. Elisha replied to her and asked her a very interesting question concerning the miracle that she needed. And here's what he said in 2 Kings 4.2. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, 
What do you have in your house? Will you say that back to me? What do you have in your house? One more time. What do you have in your house? And here's what she said. Your servant has nothing there at all except the little oil. Now there's some wonderful truths in this story. And I really don't have time to exegete at all, but I do want to point out five tremendous principles that worked in her to get her miracle. And I believe that these five principles will help you get the miracle that you need as well. And so I want to look at some of these things, and I want to give you five principles. Write them down or get the tape or the video or whatever, but I really believe that this is something that you can apply and make applicable to your own life. Number one, realize that someplace in your house, in your life, the beginning of a miracle is waiting. Realize that someplace in your house, in your life, the beginning of a miracle is waiting. See, the woman came to Elisha asking for a miracle, and Elisha said to her back, what do you have in your house? And what, what did she say? What, what was her first response? Nothing. Nothing. Except. Nothing. That's how we approach this sometimes. I'm unworthy of a miracle. I don't have anything that will work a miracle. Who am I to have a miracle? But what do you have in your house? He doesn't ask in her how worthy she was. He wasn't asking her if she was good enough for a miracle. What do you have in your house? Nothing. See, that's what we reply a lots of times. But then sort of as a second thought, she said, well, oh, you know what? Accept a little oil. I've got, I've got a little oil in my house. There's the key. Key, there's a miracle in that little oil. There's a miracle in her house just waiting for her. The little oil was the key, was the beginning of her miracle. I came into the kingdom of God in 1978. I was saved. and God really began to deal with me concerning my life, getting my life in order. And one of the things that the Lord dealt with me about were my finances. I was in debt. We were in debt. We had houses and cars and trucks and boats and big televisions and all of these things, but we lived week to week. We didn't make bad money, but it didn't matter how much money we would have made, we were still in debt. And we would have been in debt no matter what we made. <laughs> if you didn't hear it, she said, because of me. <laughs> and that's probably true. But, 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 the, but the point is, is that the Lord began to deal with me. And I, w I had a son, we had a son that was nearly ready for college. And uh, very intelligent, needed to go to college, but we had no money to send him. Uh, we, we were living week to week. And so we felt like what we needed to do was have a plan. And we felt like we would bring to the Lord our, what, we, what we had and see if there was a miracle there. Now, we didn't know at the time that's what we were doing, but that's really what we did. And, and we brought to the Lord what we had. You see, there's more in us that can be used than we think there is. And so we came to the Lord. We devised a plan. We prayed. And we felt like that what we were supposed to do was take our home that we had lived in for around nine or ten years and never had refinanced it, so there was a little equity there, and take that, that, that house, that home, and use that as an equity to build a new house. And also we had two acres of property. We had five loaves and two fish. And so we brought them to the Lord. And we were going to take this, and we were going to see if there was a miracle in there somewhere. And the plan was to sell the house and use the, pay off all of our bills and use, all the, use the equity to, to build a new house. Now, the problem is this. Is the house that we lived in was a 14, 1,500 square feet house. The house we were going to build was a 2,600 square feet house. And after we paid off all of our bills and became debt free, uh, it would have been impossible in the natural for there to have been enough money to build a 2,600 square feet house in the natural. But with God, help me, all things are, are possible. We brought it to Jesus and we devised a plan. And, and I began to do like this woman, and we read the story to you earlier, and you can read it right there. But what, but what the prophet told her to do is just go out and, and borrow all the pots that you can get. Borrow anything you can get to put this oil in, 
and keep pouring it and shut the door behind you. He gave her some instructions. And as they began to, as she began to follow these instructions, a miracle happened. Well, I was sort of like that. I began to borrow all the help I could get. I borrowed my family. <laughs> Every one of us, Bonnie, Laz, Judy, and myself, we all worked on this house. I borrowed my relatives. All of my relatives were asked, invited to come over and help me build this house. I, 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 I borrowed all of my friends. I borrowed all of our church members. You know, come over to my house and I'll feed you and your family a big steak dinner, but help me deck and roof this house. You know, and, and we would do that and people would come and I would borrow it. Miraculously, six months later, we moved from that 1,400 square feet house into a brand new 2,600 square feet house totally furnished with new appliances and everything. We moved into that house totally debt free. The money did not give out until the house was built. Yeah. Now, I just used what I had. I brought it to Jesus. I already had that. There was literally a miracle in my house. Literally. What do you have in your house? What do you have that you can bring to the Lord? I promise you there is something that you already have that will work the miracle that you need to have already in your house. So the first thing that we've all got to do is find out and realize that there is something that we already have that God can take if we'll just bring it to him already in our lives, already in our house. It may be a gift, it may be a talent, it may be something that you've got a stick, a cast net, an old jar, but there's something that you already have that God wants to use. All you've got to do is find it. Second thing, go and take action. Go, take action. Second Kings 4.3 says, Elisha says, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. See, our miracle involves our doing something. Peter had to cast his cast net on the other side. The man born blind that Jesus made mud and rubbed the mud into his eyes, he told him to go to the pool of Siloam and wash it off. He told this woman, he says, go get all the jars, shut the door behind you, you and your boys go inside, start pouring. When this one's full, move it to the side and pour another one. There's always instructions to follow. It's not going to poof. It's not going to fall out of heaven. But God's going to take something that you already have, and he's going to work a miracle through it if you'll just follow the instructions. She had to go get the pots. She had to do exactly what the prophet said. There's always instructions. You see, I had to do what I felt the Lord had told us to do is building this house. And when I did, I was able to move into a very nice house. There's a miracle in your house. The third thing is don't limit God. Don't limit God. That same verse, is, as you finish it out in 2 Kings 4, 3 says, Elijah says, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. See, uh, the amount of oil that she would get would be limited to the jars that she acquired. She alone would limit God from moving in her life. Let me tell you a secret. You alone limit God moving in your life. It is not because he doesn't want to. It's because we don't let him move like he desires to. You and I alone limit God from moving in the miraculous. Sometimes we've got to unlearn what we've learned. Sometimes we've got to really believe it. Sometimes we've got to step out in faith. Sometimes we've got, to, we've got to find it. But somewhere in your life, in your house, in your home is a miracle. And it's the thing that you need to have. Only you can limit what God will do in your life. I didn't allow people telling me or moving from a 1,400 square feet house into a 2,600 square feet house. I didn't allow that to stop me. This is the house we wanted. This is what we wanted. And God provided it. And he will for you too. Number one is, was what? There's something in your house. Number two is what? Go. Number three is what? Don't limit God. Number four, shut the door. Shut the door. 2 Kings 4, 4 through 6 says this. Then go inside. This is, these are the instructions. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars. And as each is filled, put it to one side. 
She left him and afterwards shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Now there's an emphasis there on shut the doors. And then in 4.6 it says, When all the jars were full, she said to her sons, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. Why was she to shut the door? Now there may be many reasons, but the reason that I know is that you have to shut the door to doubters and naysayers. You can't allow people that are negative and critical to get into your miracle. They will stop it. They will stop God from moving in your life. You, they will stop you from experiencing the miraculous and the life that God wants you to have. They will put doubt in your, in your mind. You shut the door to them. You don't know how many people told me, Dale, but there is no way you're going to sell this 1,400 square feet house. You pay off all your bills. And use that little oil, that little money that's left to build you a new house. It just, this is impossible. I had to shut the door to that. And when you want a miracle, you've got to shut the door to naysayers. You've got to shut the door to doubters. See, the Bible tells us, and you know it, is to be careful what we say. But do you know it also gives us equal warning on be careful what we hear? You've got to be careful the people that get around you, that input into your life, and that say things to you, that teach you, that teach your children. You've got to be careful because that will determine what kind of a life you have or they have. Here's what Jesus says about that in Mark 4, 24. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, with the measure that you hear, it shall be measured to you. What you hear determines the life you have. If you hear a bunch of negative stuff, you're going to have a negative life. If you hear a bunch of good stuff and positive stuff and edifying your life, you're going to have a good edified life. And he goes on. And unto you that hear shall more be given. If you hear correctly and you hear good stuff, you're going to get more good stuff. Our lives are greatly influenced by what we allow to hear. You've got to shut the door. What we hear affects what we are given. And if we hear correctly, if we hear the truth, then God can move in our life as we allow truth to come into us and we get knowledge of him. The divine nature inside of us creates these miracles. The divine nature inside of us allows us to experience and go gather up all the great and precious promises. Every day, you go gather your manna. Every day, you experience the supernatural abundant life that God has for you. You've got to shut the door. Be careful what you hear. Then number five says, expect the abundant life. Number five is, expect the abundant life. Second Kings 4.7 of that story says, She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. Now look at this part. You and your sons can live on what is left. See, God's purpose is for you to enjoy life to the full, not to just get by. The woman filled every jar, every canister, every container that she could possibly find. He says, now go pay your bills and then use the rest for your abundant life. Use the rest to enjoy your life to the full. God's plan is not that you and I squeak by. It's not that we just make it. He wants us to live an abundant life. Jesus says, I come to give you life and that more abundantly there's a miracle in you there's a miracle in your house and you will need miracles operating in your life if you're going to experience the abundant life God has already put into our possession what we need for miracles what do you need what do you need in your life? What do you need in your home? What do you need in your family? What do you need in your finances? I'm here to tell you today, it's in something that you already have, a gift, a talent, a cast net, a stick, a jar, fishes and loaves. But somewhere in your house, somewhere in your life, there's a miracle. There's a miracle. Expect the abundant life. Many of us... Uh, could you use a miracle today? Some of us because of a crisis. Some of us need God to move because of a crisis. But some of us simply because of a heart's desire. We don't want to be embarrassed or we want to, we want to get a breakthrough in our finances or we want a breakthrough in, in our family or, or a job. We want a better job. 
You see, there's a miracle there waiting for you. There is a divine nature in you waiting to gather the precious, great, and exceeding promises that God's given to us. There's a miracle in you. You've got to learn to expect the miraculous. You've got to learn that there's a miracle in your home. There's a miracle in the bread and the fish. There's a miracle in the stick. There's a miracle in the minted cast net. There's a miracle. And as you do these things, as you begin to, to not limit God, as you begin to shut the door, as you begin to step out in faith and find that there's a miracle in your house, as you begin to expect the abundant life, as you begin to do what God has told you to do, you will be given miracle after miracle after miracle, and you will experience that the abundant life that it may be hidden under the dew, it may be in the darkness, but there's a miracle waiting for you. God is no respecter of persons. What he did in the Bible, he will do for you as well. Do you believe that? How many of you are really going to start looking for the abundant life? You're really going to start looking for the miracles that are in your house already. How many is going to start looking more and more and more for, for the miraculous move of God in your life? Would you raise your hand if that's you? Would you, and would you give the Lord a hand, hand clap and a shout? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. We're going to pray for people now. Uh, maybe like this. Maybe you want a miracle. We'll pray that God will show you where your miracle is. You can uncover it. You can search it out. You can find it. Maybe that's what it is. But perhaps you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe that would be the first miracle. That within you, you need the divine nature. You see, you'll never experience the abundant life. You'll never experience the miraculous life, the supernatural life, until Jesus Christ comes into you and begins the, with the Spirit of God to create in you a divine nature so that you can experience the great and precious promises. We want to pray for that right now. Maybe somebody's never received Jesus. I'm not going to ask you to come up and shake my hand. I'm not going to come up and ask you to sign a membership card. All of that's between you and the Lord. All I want to do is lead you in a prayer. So I'm going to ask everybody in here, as I always do, just pray this prayer after me. And if you're serious, you will begin to experience the supernatural life as the divine nature is created within you. So let's pray. Everybody pray this after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. come into my heart.